could use a broom handle if you needed to, or you could use um, like even like a bit of flour put or beans or something put inside of a plastic bag would do the trick. Um, if you don't have anything, you could, there's, you know, options to kind of self massage just by pressing into the floor in certain ways. But um, so if you can, you'll lie on your back and you're gonna have the ball or if it's the edge of a broom handle, you'll keep it on your right side. Um, if you have something else that works for you, then do that. Um, you could technically use your fist, but it might not be very comfortable. Um, so you're gonna take the ball and put it under your outer right buttock. Make sure you're on the side and not the back, like not wrong, just different. And then set your feet wide in constructive rest so your knees will come together momentarily. And then you'll tip your knees to the right. And as you do, your weight will transfer onto the ball in such a way that it should get just delightful. <laughs> and then you'll come back and center and just do this a couple times. So tip your knees to the right and notice where the ball moves into your pelvis and then come back to center. Do it a couple times. This one I'm using is quite hard. <laughs> and as I'm realizing, it's a little slippery, so it's sliding up from under me. But play with the angles. And then see if you can tilt to the right and pause. And then you'll slide your right leg forward if you're willing, and it's kind of awful. And then you'll slide your right foot back towards you. And you'll do this a few times, just leg straight and leg sliding in. Now you could hover the leg and do it with it lifted, but it's a lot more intense. Play with maybe rolling across the ball a little bit as you do it. Rotate your thigh if you can, and you'll get a lot of <laughs> very interesting stuff happening. So any kind of motion like that for another maybe five breaths. Um, if you are willing, this is, really, this is a lot, but you can lift both legs, tip them to the right, as if you were doing like a lot of abdominal work, people like to do like this, and then you can slide your legs forward and they'll get a lot heavier. <laughs> and that might be too much, so maybe you just do one leg lifted, uh, or maybe keep your feet on the ground entirely. <laughs> All right. The best thing about teaching and practicing is that I can't hide the fact that I will give you a lot of my feedback. I can't hide the like groans and stuff. Um, so put the ball under your outer left hip and then tip your knees left. And then center and just do it a couple times and maybe explore where the ball is sitting as you kind of pass in and out of it. See if you can find the spot that feels very interesting. And then tip your knees left and leave them there. And slide your left leg forward and back. Ugh, and you've done it once already, so um, just kind of move around in any of these ways that you've been playing. We'll get more into the breath momentarily, but see what you can do to make sure that there is breath happening. Oh my God. <laughs> Then you could, if you did last time, put both legs together. They're tilted a little to the left and then you could slide them forward and back. <laughs> something going on with my left side right now um, in general <laughs> so this is like really revealing to me this morning Ooh, that's a new one I've not done before straight out the legs and split them like scissor split oh my god <laughs> all right if you feel like you need a little more to make sure you're even do that I feel like that's about it um, and then set your feet wide and sway them sway the knees sorry And then come to a more centered position so that your feet are 
underneath of your knees. And if you're willing, take your fingers to the front of your pelvis. So you're feeling for your frontal hip bones with you know, all the fingers. And then attention to the tail, you're gonna turn it down. So your low back will lift a lot. It'll exaggerate neutral. And then turn your tailbone up toward the backs of your knees and your low back will round. And for some of you, it'll flatten, for some of you won't. And then just go back and forth a few times, inhaling to arch. Slow as you exhale to round. So let it primarily be a pranayama practice. So you're stretching, breath in till you're full. There might be a brief moment where you're paused, suspended there. And then with your exhalation, a little slower than you need to round your low back. And if you do have your fingers on your hip bones, notice if they're moving symmetrically. And I almost promise you that they're slightly teetering from left to right. See if you can avoid that. And then the next time that you're halfway between, you're gonna pause. If you were to put two of your index fingers on your cubic bone, so middle of your pelvis, just above your genitals, when these three bones are level with the floor, that is neutral. So that you might think of it more like how much arch is in your low back, but technically if you level the three bones at the front of the pelvis, that is your neutral. Um, so for me, my low back does not have very much arch in neutral, um, and that's just my body. But um, lift your right leg to the ceiling. And if you can, lace your fingers behind the hamstrings and lace them tightly. And then instead of pulling the leg towards you, which will round your low back a whole bunch, not wrong, just different, push your thigh into your hands and extend your right leg as much as you can comfortably. Reach your heel to the ceiling and pull pinky toe a little more down. tethering the edge of the outer foot to the edge of the outer hip. You feel your right seat slightly narrowing. And then maybe you straighten your left leg, maybe you don't. But push into your hands with your thigh. And see if you can make your low back lighter. It might not lift, but educate yourself on what neutral feels like for you. Thigh is pressing forward. Take another breath like this. And then from here, you'll draw your left foot in and catch your right foot with your right hand if you can for a happy baby. Uh, if you can't catch the foot comfortably, you can use a strap or a belt. Um, tip side to side a few times rocking and then if you can open your left knee to the left so left leg is like half of baddha konasana now see if you can come to a balanced place in the center hover your baddha konasana leg and stick your left thumb into the back of the knee and then swoosh your thumb a little with the knee grip the outer upper shin with your fingertips and just pause here. See if you can press with your right knee down and see if you can keep the back of the pelvis balanced. So your left hand is kind of sliding the skin of the inner knee toward the outer knee. And the right hand is still pulling down on the foot. Take one more breath like this if you're all right here. What if you tried to make your low back lighter? Okay. And then you can let it go and just send your legs up and give them a little shake or something. And then you'll put your right foot down and lace your fingers behind your left hamstrings. More middle of than at the back of the knee if it's possible. 
press the thigh into the barrier of your interlaced fingers and see if you can make your low back lighter. Probably not arching, literally, but just a little more toward neutral. And then slide your right leg straight if you did last time, or bottom leg straight. Engage left outer pinky toward left outer hip. See if you can manage to feel that that is slightly compacting the outer hip. And that the low back is still light-ish. Heel up, toes down. Another breath like this. If you don't know where this is coming from, this is an active hamstring action. So like I'm getting a little bit shaky by the end here. So notice what's going on. You don't have to look for shakiness, but it might indicate something interesting. Bend your right knee, catch your left foot. Open the right knee like half of Baddha Konasana and then just tip side to side. So for some of you, your left knee will touch the floor to your left and for some of you, it won't, but it doesn't really matter. Just notice where you can rock. And then come to center and just float the right foot, it's still Baddha Konasana, thumb, left right hand in the back of the right knee. You'll grip the outer upper shin of the fingers and then Pull gently down on both of your legs with both of your hands. Inner right knee widening. Outer left thigh is pulling down toward the ground. Low back, maybe a little lighter. and send your legs up, shake or jiggle or whatever. Rock to sit, if that's all right. Find, I would find a book. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use a large book. You don't have to use anything. Um, but if you know that it's uncomfortable to sit, and it is for a lot of people, um, bring yourself up on something. So if you can get your hips above your knees, you can get your low back relatively neutral. And then sit, and if you will, put your hands on your ribs. Just settle for a few moments to give a bit more attention to the beating of your lungs. Fill completely, fill the whole rib cage extent. Slow toward empty. Briefest pause empty. Do this a couple times on your own. If you don't have to keep your hands on your ribs if you don't want, it's just nice feedback. Ears back, jaw, teeth soft. Well, jaw soft, teeth separate. It makes more sense. So, can it primarily be a breathing practice? You're not in a rush. You don't have to be in sync with me. Obviously, you'll be able to do whatever you need to do to modify. Please do. Shift off the block. Maintain that steady pace of breath. Draw yourself into a tabletop. A slightly long tabletop, so it's really a plank on your knees. If you like being on your fingers, be on your fingers. If you don't, Palms or knuckle bases is a really good option too. So like heel of hand lifted, thumb pad down, or knuckle bases down. Um, whatever makes sense for you. Take cow spine as you breathe in. 
and then push to child's pose, but don't widen your knees. So really it's Adho Mukha Virasana. Empty as you get. You're gonna draw forward as you breathe in, come to cow. Fill your lungs. And then push back, approaching empty. One more time like this. Slide forward, use your breath up. And then push back as you breathe out. Now, this time stay round, chin tucked, lift up to cat. So you'll round up. And once your shoulders are over your wrist, slide your right knee to your right thumb. We we'll call this neutral pigeon. Your toes are not turned into center. Take an inhale, lift your chest if you want to do up dog. And as you exhale, you're just going to bend your elbows and round forward. Do this twice more. Straighten your arms a little slower than you need to. Crown lifts last. Exhale, you'll lower. Empty completely. Once more, lift, breathe in. And lower as you breathe out. Lift as you inhale. Tuck your back toes. Maybe flat palms. Pull the right knee up to the chest and breathe out. Moving my head bump, take it inhale to three legged dog. Bend your knee, open your hip, or whatever you need. Take another breath in like this. And a full breath out. And then send your leg up and square your hip and put your foot down and land in a downward facing dog. And tuck your chin and roll to plank, go slower than you need to. Knees down if you like, lower to your belly. And stay by the ribs, Bhujangasana with your chest. For your knees, child's pose, push your hips to your hips. Pat, chin tuck, round up. Slide your left knee towards your left thumb, neutral pigeon. Take a inhale here, just lift your chest. Exhale, you'll bend your elbows and lower. Inhale to straight arm. Exhale to lower. You may at some point need to stop using your fingertips. Inhale to lift. If that gets there, just flatten them. Or use blocks. Exhale to lower. You may want to flatten the palms for that. Tuck your back toes. You're going to lift up and hold that knee to the belly. And then take three legged dog. And then you open the hip. It feels good. <clears throat> but notice, look at your right knee and see if it caved into the left. And see if you can keep your right thigh neutral. Just send your left leg up. And just land in a down dog. Tuck your chin and roll to plank. Lower to the ground. Point your feet, Ujjangasana, whatever size. Through the knees. Narrow knees, child's pose-ish. Come to cat and breathe out. Slide your right knee forward and breathe out. Maybe on the fingers, lift your chest and inhale. <coughs> Bend your elbows. Breathe out. Tuck the back toes, push up, breathe in. Pull right knee to the belly as you breathe out. Round your spine and listen, this is weird. Step your right foot straight to the right out to the side, tap your left knee down, you're in a gate pose, take an inhale like a cow. And then push back, think child's pose in your left leg. And keep your right foot flat if you can. As you breathe in, you'll just slide forward. Cow. Push back as you breathe out. One more time like this, draw forward, breathing in. Push back and breathe out. Now, as you come forward, flatten your left palm. Angle your left foot left like a kickstand and then float your right leg and take it straight back like you're gonna do half moon pose. Keep your right fingers down for a second. Pull your left shoulder to your back and then use your right outer hip to lift your outer leg. 
and then take your right arm up. Reach overhead if you can with your right arm, stretch as long as you can and breathe in. And then as you exhale, you're gonna bend and side bend. So right foot touches toward the ground, right arm's gonna droop overhead. And then as you breathe in, you're gonna lift up. So I'm gonna bend the left elbow to manage that. You don't have to necessarily. Exhale to bend. Inhale, you'll lift one more time like this. And then exhale, just reach across the room. Drop your right foot low. Breathing in, come back up. And then you're gonna plant the right palm and bring the right knee to the chest. Tuck the left toes behind you, plank pose, and then three-legged dog. And step outside your right pinky with your right foot. Tap your back knee and lift your chest. Bring just your front leg. Your back knee is down. Now bend your front knee. Wide lunge. Lift your back knee and straighten both if you can. Wide pyramid. Bend your front knee. Now keep the stance wide. Turn your back heel down. Come up toward warrior two. Hands on the pelvis this first time. Exhale to move into it. And as you breathe in, slow, straighten the front leg. Fill your lungs. Exhale, you're just going to bend the knee. Give attention to the back outer foot. The back leg is Tadasana. Breathe in as you come up. So back leg straight, outer hip hugging. Slightly. Once more like this, straighten your front leg. And then exhale, bend. Now come back up, hook your thumbs overhead, pull on your hooked thumbs. I just realized I'm going to be out of screen for this, but we'll just deal with that after. Tilt the body forward and come into this upright triangle pose. Grip both of your feet, lift and spread your toes if it's helpful. Feel your right seat moving in and keep it. So as far away from Tadasana as you are, do Tadasana in your legs. Now come back upright and breathe in. You're gonna bend your right knee, passing through warrior two. Tilt a little forward, side angle. I like to hold the ankle. You can elbow to thigh or whatever you wanna do that. Turn your ribs open to the left and keep your right hip pulling in. Then you're gonna look down, ground your palm, step to plank pose. Take a deep breath in, lower to your belly. Point the feet, Ujjangasana, any size. Then through your knees, hips to heels. In top, come up to cat. Slide the left knee forward, neutral pigeon. Come to your fingers, lift your chest. Bend the elbows. Round the spine. Straighten the elbows. Tuck your back toes. <clears throat> Left knee to the chest, it's plank. Now set your foot straight to the left. Tap your right knee back down. It's a modified gate pose. Inhale, cow. And then push back, think child's pose in your right leg. Inhale, you'll slide forward. Exhale, push hips back. Empty poopy. Once more. Push hips back as you exhale. Now this time as you draw forward, round your right palm and kickstand your right foot to the outer side of the mat. Sweep the left leg up. Toes are open to the side, so is the pelvis. You're not actually rotating your left thigh to the ceiling. And then take your left arm up when you feel able. Reach overhead. Take an inhalation, get long. As you exhale, bend the right elbow a little and droop. As you breathe in, you're going to tighten the left side body. Exhale, you're going to bend left side body. Once more. Now lift and breathe in. Ground left palm. Bring left knee to chest. That'll pretty much bring your right foot right where it needs to be. Go three-legged dog. And step your foot outside your left hand. Back knee down, just lift your chest, wide lunge. Straighten your front leg, and back knee can stay down for this one. Rock forward, straighten the back leg. 
and then straighten both. Exhale, push your hips back. Again, draw forward, and then turn your back heel in. Stance is purposely a little wide. If you don't like it, you can change it, of course. Exhale, sink in a little. Breathe in, straighten the leg. Breathe out, just bend the knee. Back foot gripped firmly. Inhale, come out of it. Exhale, slow to empty. Once more. Now coming up this time, the variations hooked thumbs. If you can, take your arms overhead. Sorry, I'm out of frame. Tips forward into this upright triangle pose. And then keep your arms lifting if you can, but think of pulling the upper outer legs in toward your sitting bones a little bit. Spread your toes, it'll be helpful. And get longer. Now come back upright. You'll pass through warrior two. And then tilt forward and come to side angle. So there is that same tiltiness of the pelvis from the upright triangle pose. Pull your left leg in more, stretch your right arm longer, and grip your right foot more. Ribs turning right without your butt sticking out behind you. Now look down, round your palms, set your plank pose. Take a deep breath in. Slow lower to the ground. Exhale. Cobra any size. Exhale through the knees to child's pose variation. And this time roll up into seated, so keep moving. And if you can't sit on your heels, cross your legs instead. Put your chest and give you breath in. Catch your knees as you breathe out around your spine. Now slide your hands forward and just step your right foot straight right from here. Come to your right fingers and back bend as you announce. Push back, hips to heel. Exhale. Now draw forward and kickstand your left foot. Exhale, you're gonna lift the right leg, sweep it straight back. Keep your right arm up, breathing in. As you exhale, you'll bend the top side body. Breathe in and lift up. The right hand down, the right knee to the belly. Tuck the back toes, three-legged dog. Step wide of your right hand. Back knee down, just lift your chest. Straighten your front leg. And bend the knee. Lift your chest, lift your back knee. Exhale, straighten both. Wide pyramid. Now bend the front knee. And then grip the back heel and come up to warrior two. Maybe with typical arms this time. Exhale, settle. As you breathe in, come up out of it. Hook your thumbs above you. Tilt upright triangle as you exhale. Come back up, vertical. Exhale, warrior two. Tip forward, set up side angle. So as you exhale, arm over ear, right hip hugs. Take one breath in, fully out. Then look down, ground your palms, step to plank pose. Then exhale to the ground. You can do typical vinyasa if you want. Cobra, any size. Through the knees, push hips to heels. And keep moving, roll to sit. Fingers behind you, lift your chest. You'll catch your knees, hollow around your spine. Slide your hands forward. Set the left foot to the left and come to the left fingers. Inhale, back bend from eight table. And then exhale, push your hips back. Draw forward, angle right foot to the right, lift left leg and sweep left leg up. Take left arm up and reach overhead and bend. Left foot droops. Breathe in, just lift up. Left hand down, left feet of belly. Tuck the back toes. It's three legged dog as you inhale. Step wide of your pinky. Back knee down. You know the sequence of your chest. Back knee down, straighten your front leg. Rock forward, fill your lungs, straighten your back leg. Exhale, straighten both. 
forward. Warrior two. Exhale, settle. As you breathe in, come up out, straighten the front leg, hook the thumbs, and tilt diagonal. Inhale, vertical. Warrior two. Tilt forward, breathing in, set it up. Exhale, land inside angle pose. Take one breath. Ribs spinning, buttock hugged in. Look down, plank pose. To the floor or halfway. Whatever you like, cobra pose or up dog. Through the knees, this time tuck the toes and go to down dog. Push your hands down strongly. Bring your thighs up and back. And then begin to walk your feet towards your hands. And I'm gonna suggest, you'll probably want them later for something, but if you do have two blocks, it'll be helpful to just set them up now and you can use them for this thing here. Um, so you're in feet together or hip width. In Uttanasana, or really it's more like hard up. Um, but set your legs up in a comfortable way for you. And if you can't straighten your knees, bring yourself up higher or go to a wall or something that helps you with that. Now shift to the back of your heel bones and identify that cue, back of the heel. And notice if you can see me, my butt's sticking way back behind me, right? So to jump, shift to the front of your heel bones. And then notice they'll be far more vertical, your thigh bones, keep that. And then slightly round the spine a little bit more, pull a little bit deeper. Um, if you have low back injuries, disc out of place or anything, you might not do this at all. You could squat instead. If things are healthy, firm, outer buttocks slightly in. And when you fold, fold with a little tension. And then lift halfway and stay on the front of the heels, which is hard to do. Hover your arms, put them on hands on hips or whatever makes sense for you. Shoulders slightly back, lean with your chest and stand. Take your arms straight down. Identify neutral in standing. So if you're up against a wall, you would have that little bit of space in your lumbar. That cueing of hugging flesh of buttock in. When you're in Tadasana, it's possible that you'll clench. Don't clench. It's a very fine line between clenching your butt cheeks together and slightly firming your hips to be actively standing in Tadasana. Spread your toes, very you helpful. Now let your arms reach up. And palms will face each other up there. Squeeze in like you have a block between your hands. And then notice if you're in a big back bend. It's not wrong, but pull your ribs in a bit and send the flesh of your buttock down a bit. If you tend to be posterior, don't tuck, don't round. Just a little attention at the outer hips. Now fold, maybe with straighter legs, and you'll shift to the front of your heel bones if you can. The halfway lift. Inhale. And then you can step back, you can hop this in your practice, chaturanga, or skip it. Point your toes to the back end if you're choosing. Then round the spine if you can to lift. Go through plank to down dog. And then apply the same thing from halfway lift to down dog. And really it starts to make more sense here because there's no way you can clench your butt cheeks together here. But that little bit of engagement. I was taught to fear straightening my legs in these poses, but that causes a whole host of other problems. <laughs> so, you know, you play with as much as this as feels okay for you. Um, I'll cue things less as we continue. So you'll move more on your own. You're gonna lift your heels as you breathe in, look forward. And then bend your knees deeply and step or lightly hop. Lengthen halfway. Fold, meet on the front of your heels. Press your feet, use your legs. Stand. Exhale, join your palms. Paddles. And do this again, mostly on your own. 
if you are um, not that familiar, you can follow along. I'm gonna cue minimally as you move through some citations. feel okay holding down dog for three or five breaths, do that. And if your tendency is to rush, I would say focus there first. But it's not wrong if you don't want to hold down dog, you can still keep flowing. Can it go back to pranayama? Yes, you're moving through sun salutations. more care to the pacing. So I'm going to do one more A. And you can continue with me or modify. Make sure your hands are pushing down into the floor. Lift your heels. Set or hop if you're ready. So I'll lead you through one round of Surya B. And you can just go if you know where you're going, but chair pose, take a deep breath in. Fold with your exhale. Lengthen. Step or hop or skip it. If you can, the exhale to down dog steps the right foot forward. I'm gonna go with high lunge today. If you want warrior one, you're welcome to take it. Eventually, it's one breath up, one breath down. For this one, maybe you're holding a breath or two or three, and then lower, step back, vinyasa, or skip it. Try not to rush through it. Down dog, exhale, steps the left foot. You're gonna inhale right up. Holding this first cycle. In the future, it might be more swift, or you can skip it entirely. Skip the vinyasa between if you prefer. You're not going to go back to the front of the mat. You're going to keep moving through the same. So right foot forward, inhale, you'll go up. This is optional. You may need to look. As you exhale, you lower your hands. Step halfway back. Lift the back leg. Make it straight as fuck. And then sweep it into a big handstand hop. Very optional. <laughs> Try not to let chaturanga get sketchy because you're excited about handstands. Go back, step your left foot. You inhale to rise. You exhale to lower. Half step, hop or don't. If you hop on the inhale, much more potent. If you're feeling well, do one or two more. You don't want, take a resting. So on your own, a couple more times. It gets quite swift, and if you're adding the handstand hops, it gets very sweaty. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna see what's going on with y'all. <laughs> nice, Derek. So, the next left might be your last here. Um, if you need one more beyond that, go with it. Nice, Melissa, good. Oh, hey, Carla, I didn't see you before. <laughs> so finish your next left, if that's enough. 
and then we'll come down to, I don't know, Vajrasana or Virasana, something seated in the show. face whatever direction makes sense for you. But come to stand, and you're gonna set, I'm not gonna mirror this, you're gonna set your right foot, the right ankle in your hand again, and put your foot up against your inner thigh if it's possible, keep hold of the ankle. And if you can't put your foot on your thigh, you'll put on your calf, and don't worry about holding up the ankle. If it's on your knee, it's not the end of the world, don't just push a lot of pressure into it. And then see if you can feel your right middle buttock moving toward your right forearm. Your inner leg will push up against your forearm as well. Pull your left buttock in, so Tadasana actions. And then you can hook your thumbs, take your arms up, or you can do whatever you want, really, behind your back or something. Focus the right buttock moving forward, and not the right knee getting sideways. Really shouldn't. Bend the toes and standing foot is helpful. Lift the arms. It's kind of strange to me how the music is kind of lining up with this, but <laughs> push your right buttock forward. Who knows what the fuck York is talking about? <laughs> Take one more breath. And then just release your right leg. Step down for a moment, let your arms fall. Get in Tadasana. And moving a second side, nothing in between. So hold ankle if it's available. Keep hold for a couple breaths. Right hand on the right hip might be helpful. Pull right hip in. Left hip forward into the forearm. So your left arm is like a a proprioceptive tool, as Nikki B would love to say, I imagine. <laughs> and then hook your thumbs, and you're gonna take your arms up, if you did last time. When you're on one leg, it starts to become more apparent how important the hugging of the outer hip is. Lift the arms. a sharp musical turn. <laughs> Widen the inner left knee skin to the left. Take one more breath. And then your left leg's gonna go forward for a moment. You're gonna put it down. You're gonna step back toward the front of your mat together or hip width. Chair pose, take a deep breath in. And fold as you breathe up. Lengthen half width. Step or hop or skip vinyasa. Back bend of your choosing. Belly lifts you, down dog. Lift your right leg. Step outside of your right hand. Back knee down, take an inhale, lift your chest. Same as before. Straighten the front leg, hips back. Now bend your front knee. Lift your back knee. And then straighten both and push your hips back, wide pyramid. You're gonna bend the knee, come forward. Like earlier, turn the back foot down, warrior two. Exhale, settle. As you breathe in, come up out of it. Hook the thumbs above you, tilt forward, upright triangle. 
As you bring in, come back to Blue Warrior 2 to side angle. Catch the ankle if you're willing. Elbow against inner knee, left arm overhead. Now push into your ankle. Pull your right hip in and then straighten your right leg and come to triangle. Push into the ankle if you will. Left arm can go straight up. And then maybe overhead. So take your hand to the floor if you want to. You bring it to a block. Hug the hips in. Last breath. Now look forward, bend your right knee. I'm gonna suggest using one of those blocks for half moon, lift your back leg. Take the left arm up. Put a bend in your right knee, more than you think. Widen it. Right butt again, once again. Left arm wherever you want. And then could you bend everything, right knee, bend top side body in a group, and pause for a moment, droopy. <laughs> That's what Kate used to call this droopy chandrasana. Now keeping the droop, what if you straighten your standing leg? Keep your right buttock hugging in or you won't likely hold this. Use the floor if you don't want the block. Take one more breath. Okay, now lift up. And then put a little more bend in the knee and see if you can hover the right hand. And step as slow as you can back and straighten your front leg. Turn to the left, skandhasana. Any Sandhasana variation, it could have the right foot flat, and you could have your bum on a block. Get your fingers forward to the wood floor in front of you if you can, or whatever's in front of you. Take one more breath. And then lift yourself up and turn back to the front of your mat. Round your palms and step back. Down dog. Take a deep breath. Ninyasa, if you like. Push back, down, please. You're gonna lift your left leg. Uh-oh. Did I lose you? <laughs> lift your left leg. Step outside your left hand. Back knee down, you're gonna lift your chest. Straighten the front leg, hips back. Rock forward, straighten your back leg. And then straighten both and shift your hips back. Pyramid. Now bend your left knee. Turn your back heel down, come up to warrior two, just like earlier. Inhale, come up, hook your thumbs. Exhale, upright, triangle. Come back up as you breathe in. Bend your left knee, warrior two. Just passing through tilt forward, side angle setup, hand to ankle, right arm over the ear. Take a breath in, pull your left buttock in, and then straighten your leg and try to maintain that. Turn the ribs, right arm. Could be straight up if you can't get it over your ear, that's fine. Then continue to work the legs like we've been talking about. Now look down, I would reach the right arm back, bend the left knee. I like the block wider to the diagonal. If it's straight in front of you, I don't usually find it very helpful. Bend your left knee a lot, like way more than you would ever think for half moon. And then let, bend the left elbow a little. Let the right foot droop behind you. Let the right fingers roll over top of you. And then if you did last time, keep the droop, but start to straighten the standing. Pull the left hip in. If you're looking at the floor, it'll be a lot easier to balance. <laughs> I'm noticing that because I was trying to look at the camera. Last breath. Tether left buttock toward center. Okay, now you're gonna lift back up. Half moon proper, float your left hand, just a transition. You're gonna step back like you're going to warrior two, straighten the front leg, turn a little to the side. Skandhasana, if you can flex your left foot and get relatively low, go for it. Um, if you're super flexible, you might pull up a little higher than you might want to, which is what I should do. <laughs> but it feels good after that, so you can also just play with that. Is the blood on the corner? Is the blood on the ceiling? Do we need to be 
back, child's pose. Roll up to sit. Fingers behind you. Just take a breath. You can lift your hips or not. And you'll catch your knees and round. Now, adding from earlier, slide your hands forward. Step your right foot to the right, to the right finger. So you can inhale and back bend. And then push back as you exhale. And different this time. You're gonna slide forward, tuck your left toes, straighten your left leg. You've been here once before, but you didn't hold it. Now roll to the outer blade of the left foot and lift the right leg and set it straight back like you did earlier. Right fingers might still be down. Pelvis is open to the side. Now what if you started to reach up with your right arm, press outer left foot really firm, and then you could bring your right knee in and put it in tree. You could step it behind you. You could take it up if you really want to and catch your big toe. That's not really what I had in mind for today, but you're welcome to do it. But reach with your top arm. Your left knee could be down as well. Take one more breath. If you're all right here, lift your left side body. Now look toward the front of your mat, step your foot wide, put your right fingers down, tap your back knee, lift your chest. Straighten your front knee. Now bend the front knee. Straighten the back leg. Straighten both. Bend your knee. Warrior two. Come up as you breathe in. Poke your thumbs, tilt forward. Upright triangle. Come back up as you would now. Bend your knee, you're skipping side angle. This gonna go right to half moon. Take the left leg up, lift the left arm over the ear, take a deep breath in. Like before, bend the knee, bend the elbow, and droop. Do it twice more. Inhale to lift, get really long. Exhale to bend everything. Again like this, lift yourself up. And then exhale, get really long. As you breathe in, lift up. And then bend your knee, step back like you're in the warrior two, but you're not. Put your right hand outside your foot or use a block. Straighten your right leg, it's triangle pose. It's gonna get weird. So, you can skip this next part. <laughs> if it's possible, bend both of your knees. Crawl your right fingers a little further back. Crawl your right foot a little bit further forward. Okay, now this gets, again, weird. Straighten both legs, and it's a longer pyramid, uh, triangle pose. And then if you want to, make it kind of obnoxiously long, and try it again, flex your right foot. Reach your left arm overhead. You can keep it this long, you can make it even longer. You can eventually try to reach for the foot, but I think that's not really gonna happen from this length. Have to go a little bit lower. Like a confused Vishwamitrasana. You know, bend your knees to come out. Put your back knee right down on the floor. So you're basically in half split. And then you're gonna slide your right leg back. Put your knees together. Sit in Vajrasana if you can. Let your right hamstrings chill. Do any seated back bend. Catch your knees. Round your spine. hands forward, tabletop, left foot steps, left gate pose, left finger top, stick an inhale and back bend. Push back, hips to heels. And then rock forward, but straighten your back leg as you do. And then roll to the outer edge of the right foot and slowly send the left leg up and keep your left fingers down for a sec, if you can. Eventually, you'll peel your left side open if you can. <laughs> The toes might tap behind you. They might stay balanced long down below you, let's say. Um, you could do tree or big toe. Any variation that seems sensible, including no side plank at all. Now look 
to the front of your mat. Step your left foot wide, come to your left fingers, your back knee, lift your chest. And then straighten your front leg. Keep your hips back. Rock forward. Straighten your back leg. And straighten both. Exhaling. You'll bend your front knee. Warrior two. Up out of it, arms above, hook the thumbs. Tilted upright triangle. Come back up. We'll bend the knees, skip side angle triangle, go straight to half moon. Right leg lifts. Right arm overhead, take a deep breath in, get really long. And then bend knee, bend elbow if you can, and droop. Do it again. Lift, straighten the legs, limbs. Exhale, bend left limbs and stretch the right limbs. Once more. The bend and snap. Oh, appropriate for pride. <laughs> now, slowly step back, like you're into warrior two, but instead, put your fingers outside your foot and start to straighten the legs, just a different triangle variation. Walk if you need it. And then bend both knees, which again is super awkward. <laughs> Bring your fingers further down the mat. Slide your left foot further forward, and then try it again. So it's this awkward triangle pose. You can keep it this long, and it's a little less awkward. You can take it a little longer if you want to. So it's almost a split. And reach the right arm over the ear. You would have to bend the left elbow probably to get your right hand to your foot. Again, that is very, very optional. <laughs> right, you're gonna put your hand down, put your back knee down. So you come into half split at a bit of an awkward place. And then just slide back, sit on your heels. Sit upright, if that's okay. A couple of steady breaths. From here, maybe some water. <laughs> Anyone sweat? I have literally not sweat this much in this class for quite some time. Okay, so you're gonna come back to what I called neutral pigeon. So your right knee size forward, if you have two blocks, it'll be really helpful. Have them right alongside of your hip bones and sit upright. So. Sometimes we call this the back leg of Hanuman. So, cause you're, the front leg's kind of out of the way. So you can work on try lifting the back knee and straightening the back leg without your pelvis completely spilling forward. And then bend the knee, lift the low belly a little and try it again with different attention. You can even try lifting the back knee and then trying to balance, you can try to take your arms up. It's quite awkward. Oh yeah, usually, sorry. <laughs> Keep your right hand down and stretch your left arm up. I forgot where I was going. And then stretch your left arm across the room to the right and make your back leg straighter. And you can even come off the block if you like and put your right hand on the floor and, oh, that's nice. This is what I call this, a while back, I called this fucked up wild thing. <laughs> it, we came into it a very different place, but this is basically the same idea. <laughs> All right, now put your back knee down and this gets more optional. You're gonna take this leg variation into the air. So this is very optional. Watch if you're unsure. You're gonna tuck the right toes, keep them where they are, lift the left leg. Probably watch me first. Bend the top knee deeply, so you squeeze the heel to the seat and send the kneecap toward the ceiling. And then do flicks off your right toes until you maybe get a little bit of air time. And it might be a very little bit of air time, <laughs> depending on your practice, but play with it. You might end up in what Skylar calls stag leg, which <laughs> I was kind of flirting with, but not holding well. I haven't done this in a while, because <laughs> I've been injured. So a couple of moments to play with handstand, if you like. Get bit, if you don't need. This is stag leg, handstand. Down if you're ready. 
Gently move your wrists, I wouldn't shake them. Okay. Slide your left knee forward. Toes are pointed straight back, neutral pigeon. You can stay right here. Hands on blocks or not. Try tugging the back toes, lifting the back thigh, and then put it down. Just notice when you lift the back thigh, your pelvis will tilt forward, it's not a bad thing. But see if you can do it with less spill of the front pelvis and more length at the back pelvis. Now lift and pause, keep your left hand down, stretch your right arm up, and then side bend, right arm goes left. And then if you did last time, left hand comes to the floor and you're gonna do a weird little back bend. Right arm goes up and behind you a bit. And then you can come back down, and if you're still working with the handstand option, um, go to a wall, first of all, if you want to. But if you're doing that same thing, bend the top knee, push the weight over the wrists, almost more of the fingers, and then flex off of the left toes. recently um, and what I'm finding is a lot of people are very attached to Ashtanga being like even as you get to the seated poses you still do flow vinyasa after each one I'm over that <laughs> who cares so um, I haven't been doing uh, deep back bending for a bit so I don't know how this is going to go but you can do the blocks under the feet whether or not you're doing wheel pose or bridge pose you do the same thing um, you put your feet up on the block and hips under heels. Well, hips you want pretty close to the block, let's say. The elevation of the feet should make things easier for your wrists. But if you have the feet too far away, you might not actually benefit from it. So you should wiggle a little closer. And I think lift the hands back by the shoulders. If you can, turn your hands out slightly. So fingers more toward the long edges. And then gather your hands where they need to be, your feet pressing firmly, hug your elbows in a little. You can start on the crown of the head, try not to turn your head if you're there, and then lift your head and straighten your arms if it's available. Some of you will start to straighten the legs more so that the wrists are more under the shoulders eventually. More uh, like differentiate between it being a half circle and a bow, which is a parabola and not a circle at all. Five to eight breaths. When you need to come down, try to come to your shoulder bones and not your head if you can avoid it, but the end of the world. Put the feet wide, knock the knees together. Constructive rest. Or something similar. Circle your wrists. in that direction, you're welcome to do another wheel pose or two. Um, if you want to move just into a simple bridge pose with bound fingers, do that. If you want supported bridge, do that instead. Do camel pose. Nice to be able to do that again. <laughs> okay, so if you are just about ready to be done with active back bending, come to supported bridge with a block 
uh, lowest setting and horizontally set across the back of the pelvis. And then you can do one leg at a time or you can do both legs. The heels drop and the toes will turn out. It's relaxed. And then if you wanted to, you could flex your feet and bring a little closer together. Treat them like Tadasana. Press your thighs down. If you were standing, pressing back. And then you could stretch your arms alongside your ears and really lengthen the arms back as the feet lengthen forward. Lift the arms more, straighten the legs more if you're in this active variation. And let the legs relax for a few breaths. Maybe you want to come off the block. Um, following this, I'll suggest you leave the block there and take legs up. Like, legs up the wall without the wall or like shoulder stand without all the neck issues do like do as little as possible with your legs if they'll stay up there try not to effort anything just let gravity Pull them down into pocket. You might, like, I'm tingling right now. Which, uh -oh. <laughs> I'm assuming that probably happened for all of you as well. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was probably very jarring. Um, and I did something I always tell students never to do, which is to jump up off the block like that. <laughs> if it's at all helpful, it wasn't comfortable. Um, <laughs> that was jarring. You can start to sway your knees <laughs> side to side. Or, you know, if you're still on the block, take a few more breaths. breaths bring your knees in and cap your kneecaps with your palms like fingers and palms and then just rock side to side or a little circle or something in that vein back up to call the and then if possible up toward a seat and take like, I'm gonna I'm gonna face you because I'm actually I'm gonna rearrange the camera a little bit I'm sure we all jumped up to read the alert yeah probably <laughs> I hope you all didn't do anything funky there um, so you're gonna sit facing the camera if possible legs forward um, and again look at your feet and make them into tadasana feet so big toes push a little forward pinky toes pull a little back and then tense your fingers behind you and lift your chest so dandasana uh, variation keep your legs active and then if you can flatten your palms by your outer pelvis and just push your hands down like you're trying to do up dog let your low back lift as much as it will if you need blocks in your hands, you can put them in beside your bones. Or keep on fingertips. The legs are engaged here. Take another deep breath. Okay, and then soften and let your spine just flex a little bit as you release the work from the arms. And then pull your left heel towards your left groin. 
Okay, so it's not traditional Janu, which is more square toward the long leg, um, but you're gonna open your pelvis wider if it's comfortable. Um, if this knee is way up off the floor, put a block under there or a blanket or something if you got something. Take your right fingers beside you to the right. Left finger is just inside the knee. Turn your body towards your right shin. Sit taller before you're concerned with going anywhere. And then lift your left arm straight up. And walk your right fingers a little further back. These headphones are nice today. I don't know. I think it's just so sweaty. Lift your left arm up more as the right fingers walk back. Keep your left hip down. And then take your left hand toward the outer right leg. Connect it somewhere if you can. Hold the pinky edge of the foot if that's available to you. And then press your left buttock back toward the ground. Might not get there. And eventually you might catch the foot with both hands. Keep your left ribs turning to the right. And think length before death. And then you can always move around a little bit, right? You're not stuck. Explore the edges. What does it be like to lift your left pelvis, pelvis instead of grounding it? And then come up to sit, if you're ready. Straighten your left leg. Take all your fingers behind you and treat Upavishta, which is this variation, like when you were in Dandasana. Straighten your legs, flex your feet, plug your outer hips against the ground. If you could do it all again. And then flex for just a moment, just release your hands. Pull your right heel to the right groin. Thighs are open, quite wide. And then left fingers outside, left hip, right fingers inside, left knee, turn, so there's a twist here. Sit upright first. And then reach your right arm up and crawl your left fingers further back. Round your right hip and lift your right arm. And then cross the outer leg somewhere with your hand. You can keep the left fingers behind you. Or you can bring them in. You might hold the foot with both hands. And then breathe more. And you've been here once before, so what do you need from this? Can you shift, wriggle if you need to, to find something worth your attention? <laughs> I forgot about this song. <laughs> Next couple breaths, if you're ready, come back up. Sit and extend the legs to straight, give them a little shake. Um, if you do have blocks, have them close by. If you have bolster or pillows or something that you want to use, we're going to get comfy in one or two shapes momentarily. Um, for now, if you can, bring your feet together. Baddha Konasana this time. Um, you'll take your hands behind you. Lift your chest. This might be enough, depending on your body. If you can, you're going to lift your butt and step it closer to your heels, if you can. So you've got your knees in quite deep flexion. And then bring your hands in a little closer. Press your hands down and press your knees open. Work your feet. Flex the toes or widen the toes. Activate the feet. In a little down toward the chest. Not quite Jalandhara Bandha, but in that direction. Spencer's 
Okay. Then you'll back out of that a little bit. And I'm going to give you two options, the first of which is more accessible. Um, so if you have blocks or bolsters, you can use them. Nicer to have bolsters than blocks, but with your legs narrow, your knees bent, your arms will wrap around the backs of your thighs. Your arms will rest on the block. So this is not an active variation of this at all. Um, if you want to do an active one first and then transition to this, do that. Uh, better probably in that order. Hmm. If that's where you want to go, go there. You'll, some of you have been familiar with this over the last few weeks. Wide legs. Be clear, Upavishta is more 90 if you're super flexy. Samokonasana is the wide split, but that's a very different pose and not what I'm suggesting to do here. Um, blocks will be out in front of you like so. If you have a, block, a blanket or a towel or something that you want to use, you can put them on top. You can put the bolster on top. Um, some of you won't be able to go quite as low as I'll show you here, but um, if it's interesting, your belly is caught by the lower block. Your hands will rest on the higher block, forehead on the hands, or chin on the hands. This can be interesting for a few breaths. And then try flexing your feet and hugging your outer buttock down against the floor. And then after a few breaths like that, relax. And your feet will flop in. And I don't know, I was in teacher training recently where it was suggested that this was never to be done, but nothing's never to be done, y'all. We can do many, many things. The body is not as breakable as people make us sometimes fearful it is. <laughs> so, you know, it's not, nothing's right or wrong. Play with both of those options and see what feels good for you. See if you can fill your lungs completely. and then take it really slow, approaching empty. Do this a few times on your own. You could transition from here if you want to sit, um, you do a little twist action. You could come onto your back and do happy baby, kind of a full circle moment as we referenced that at the beginning. But um, anything you like, I'm going to stay here for a few minutes. Start to think about where you'd like to rest today. So you might have a few more breaths where you are. If you're in anything asymmetrical, make sure that you take your time and even out what you need. You could do legs up the wall, legs up on your couch. You're always welcome to sit instead of lying, or you could even lie on your side. So set yourself up in something that you believe will be long-term comfortable. Move your tongue around your mouth and unstick your molars. 
unclench your jaw, soften around the underside of the cheekbones and around the eye socket. <clears throat> and as simple as all those suggestions are, there's a, always potential to maintain tightness. Sometimes it's just because we're trying to rest. <laughs> Things get into their patterns. Have a few conscious breaths to begin. Rest your attention. And realize that the shapes are, and the breath work is all just like a decoder ring for your inner experience. You can get to this place and be more supple and potentially more receptive. Maybe it's more patient with yourself, with others. You're anchored to your mat, through your physical body. Let your mind be tethered to that spot, but let it drift. There's not one aim, but to just rest in that periphery. You know, somebody should really complain to those uh, Amber Alert people. <laughs> if that wasn't too jarring, stay where you are for another couple of breaths. Or maybe you come to sit instead if you did have to get up. But begin to gather your attention if it wasn't completely disrupted there. your tongue, your jaw. And take a few moments to make your way to one side. If you need to stay, stay longer. That was a relatively short bit of space. So if you need more, just mute me. If you are ready, come up to sit. You can rest your hands on your lap. You can bring them together or cross them or anything meaningful to you. Draw your skull back, your chin slightly down. And acknowledge your efforts.
there's not a correct outcome or one thing you're supposed to do, but just be open to your experience and keep looking deeper. questions unmute yourself or just unmute yourself to say things you don't have to have questions <laughs> thank you is anyone else sweating <laughs> thanks so much man thanks for coming uh, great i'll try to be i'll try to be there on friday i think for you great. this is derek y'all he's there. a fellow kula uh, friend. I'll, um, You're in D.C., right? Um, not anymore. I'm outside of D.C. Okay. in West Virginia. But, you cool. know, basically. Okay. Yeah, I was. Nice. Uh, cool. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having everybody. me. Donnie. Yeah. Thanks. See ya. Thank you. See you guys soon. Have a great day.